Hello everyone, this is Dr. Matt C. Howard and welcome to week 14 of your Business 255 course. Uh, this week we're going to be covering mediation with regression. Uh, particularly we're going to learn how to do Sobel tests. So we're going to learn what is mediation and what is a Sobel test and how do we do it. Um, also as a side note, I'm recording this lecture from my office on campus like I always do. But today I had to bring my dog with me so you might hear some barking in the background. Hopefully he'll be good, but if you hear barking, that's why. Okay, so mediation with regression. So as I mentioned last week, in research and practice, we often investigate the direct effect of variables. So we're often interested in questions like, does job satisfaction predict job performance? Or does location relate to job commitment? So we're often interested in these direct effects. Does X affect Y? Does X directly relate to Y? So these very simple XY relationships. However, sometimes we want to investigate uh, whether a variable explains the relationship between two other variables. So sometimes we want to know whether a third variable might explain the relationship between an X and a Y variable. So sometimes we're interested in asking things like, is the relationship of job satisfaction and job performance explained by motivation? Or something like, is the relationship between relation and job commitment explained by employee benefits? So things like, maybe job satisfaction causes higher motivation, which causes higher performance. Or sometimes location uh, determines your benefits, which then determines your job commitment. So in these instances, we're wanting to know uh, what explains a relationship, what justifies that relationship. Exactly why does X affect Y? And we're digging deeper. We're going beyond just the direct effect. And as you guessed, that's called a mediator. That's when uh, you're looking at mediation. So this is a simple representation of mediation. It's when you're looking at a predictor influencing a mediator, which then influences the outcome. And that explains why the predictor influences the outcome all overall. Uh, also, mediation can also be called indirect effects. You could be saying that you're looking at indirect effects when you're testing for mediation. And that's, just, and that's because we're not looking at a direct effect. We're instead looking at the indirect effect of a predictor on the outcome through the mediator. So whenever you hear the term indirect effect, you should instantly know we're talking about mediation. Because once again, we're no longer looking at direct effect of X on Y, of a predictor on the outcome. Instead, we're looking at the indirect effect of a predictor on the mediator on the outcome. So we're looking at the overall indirect effect of the predictor on the outcome through the mediator. And as I said, this is called mediation or the indirect effect. So one question you might ask yourself is, why do we care about mediation? And the answer is sometimes we can't really understand the true effect of a variable until we understand the mediating variables. But sometimes we might know generally, hey, this variable is important. Hey, this variable relates to outcomes. But we might not know why. We might not know exactly why. And it might not make sense sometimes why that variable would affect outcomes. Um, so for example, we might know that the personality trait of Machiavellianism relates to worse team performance because Machiavellians uh, tend to uh, dislike people, they tend to take advantage of people, they tend to do bad things. So in general, if you have a team full of Machiavellians, they're going to have t worse team performance. Well, we might not know why, and therefore we might not, not, sorry, we might not know why, and therefore we might not know how to counteract it. That be because we don't exactly know, well, why does a Machiavellian person lower their team's performance? We might not know what procedures to put in place to prevent that. Or we might not know what measures to take to then say, well, if we have to have those people, what can we do to make sure they don't damage our team performance? That they don't reduce the effectiveness of our teams? So you could conduct a study, you could investigate the mediators, and you could see that Machiavellians are more likely to social undermine. They're more likely to backstab people. They're more likely to sabotage people, which then leads to lower team performance. And that would make sense because Machiavellians want to look better. They want to make sure that, they're look, that they appear better than everyone else. So they might sabotage their team members. So therefore they would look better, but their team might suffer overall. So therefore we could show that Machiavellianism relates to social undermining, which then relates to worse team performance. And because we would know that, we could then put procedures into place to reduce that social undermining. We could put procedures into place to prevent that social undermining. We could make sure we have a more open team system. We have more transparency in the team's procedures. We could do a multitude of things to try to fix that negative effect of Machiavellians 
because we know what the mediator is. We know how they reduce team performance, and that's through social undermining. Okay, so that is a quick five minute introduction to mediation. Um, there's so, so, so much more we can talk about conceptually, theoretically about mediation. Uh, there are literally many, 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 many professors out there that have spent their entire career just studying the concept of mediation, not even applying it, not even testing it in situations, just studying the concept of mediation. So I know this was a very brief introduction. Because this is near the end of the semester of an undergraduate course, um, so because it's undergraduate, we are not going to dive into it that much anyway, but it's also near the end of the semester, and I know that the students in this class are kind of fried, and to be honest, I'm kind of fried too. Uh, so we're going to keep that introduction to mediation as brief as possible. So if you're confused about it, if you don't really understand it, feel free to shoot me an email and I'm happy to explain more. I'm happy to go over it more. But otherwise, that's all I really want you to know about mediation. I just want you to generally understand it explains a relationship. It dives deeper into that relationship between an X and a Y variable by identifying the mediator. Okay. So mediation with regression. Um, so using regression, we can test mediated effects with continuous variables. So with regression, we can see whether a mediator is a significant mediator, whether there is a significant indirect effect, whether X significantly influences Y through the mediator. We can do that with regression. We can do that with Excel with the help of a few websites. So therefore, we can test whether mediated effects are significant, whether there are significant indirect effects with regression in Excel with the help of other websites. But just as a side note, you can test mediation with dichotomous or even categorical variables. So you don't have to use continuous variables to test for mediation, but that's typically the easiest place to start at is using, category, or sorry, using continuous variables. So therefore, we're gonna start with the easiest, easiest example. We're gonna have a continuous predictor we're going to have a continuous mediator, and we're going to have one continuous outcome. So therefore, we're going to look at one predictor, one mediator, one outcome, and we're going to try to see whether there's a significant indirect effect, or whether, the, uh, whether there's a significant mediated effect, or another way to put that is whether the indirect effect of the predictor on the outcome through the mediator is statistically significant. We can test all of that, and that's all saying the same thing. So. Okay, so I'm going to go over it in this lecture real quick. Um, this will be the same uh, data set that you'll have in the guide, so don't feel the need to follow along right now. Just watch what I'm doing, and then when you get to the guide, you can more easily understand what's going on. So this is the data set. As you can see, this is the example we've been talking about already. We have job satisfaction, we have motivation, and we have job performance. So we have those three variables, and we want to see whether job satisfaction influences motivation, and then whether motivation influences job performance. And ultimately, we want to see whether there's a significant indirect effect of job performance, or sorry, of job satisfaction on job performance through motivation. So to do this, we actually have to run two different regressions. We have to run two different regressions. The first one, we have to see whether our predictor significantly predicts our mediator. That's the first one. So we have to see whether our predictor significantly predicts our mediator. So we have to see whether job satisfaction significantly predicts motivation. Then we have to see whether our mediator significantly predicts our outcome while accounting for our predictor. So we have to see whether our mediator significantly predicts our outcome while accounting for our mediator. So in this example, that would be we have to test whether motivation significantly predicts job performance while accounting for job satisfaction. So those would be two separate regressions we have to do. And let's go ahead and start with the first one. Let's go ahead and start with whether job satisfaction significantly predicts motivation. To do, to, sorry, to do that, we will just run a typical regression like we've done many, many, many times throughout the semester. So you should be an expert at this by now. So we just go to the Data tab. We click on Data Analysis. We, in this window, scroll down to the Regression uh, option. Click on the Regression option and push OK. And this very familiar window should pop up. This very, very familiar window should pop up. So as always, we have to tell it what our outcome uh, data is. We have to tell it what our outcome data is. And in this example, we're running a regression in which our predictor predicts our mediator. So as I said, in this first, uh, in this first regression we have to run, we have to see whether job satisfaction predicts motivation. So therefore, we click that button to tell Excel what our outcome range is. 
and in this first regression our outcome is motivation so make sure you highlight that motivation data make sure you highlight that motivation label because that's our mediator and then in the first regression we want to use that as our outcome and then we click that other highlighted button next we have to tell Excel what our predictor data is next we have to tell Excel what our predictor data is so once again we hit this highlighted button we then highlight our predictor data which in the first regression is just job satisfaction alone because we're seeing whether job satisfaction predicts motivation so we highlight that data that's currently highlighted in this slide then we click on the other highlighted button and then because we highlighted the labels we have to tell Excel that we indeed highlighted the labels when we just did that so click on that labels button and then click on OK then click on OK and you should get your basic regression results we've seen time and time again in this course you should be very familiar with this by now you should know exactly what you're looking at and hopefully you do so from just a brief look you can immediately see that job satisfaction was indeed a significant predictor of our mediator there was a significant relationship between job satisfaction and, jo and uh, motivation so in this one we see the p-value for that was 0.032 that's less than 0.05 so right off the bat we do know that job satisfaction is a significant predictor of motivation but for now we just want to write down these two numbers we just want to write down the unstandardized beta coefficient and the standard error of job satisfaction's effect on motivation so go ahead and write those two numbers down the unstandardized beta coefficient for job satisfaction is 0.098 and the standard error is 0.043 so write those two numbers down we will need those later so when you're going through the guide don't forget to write that down you will have to go back and get it okay now let's go back to your data set um, how to do that if you've calculated your regression is just look at those little tabs at the bottom that say sheet 2 and sheet 1 click on sheet 1 sheet 1 should be where your data is located sheet 1 should be where your data is at so click on that sheet 1 tab and then once you open up your data again click on the data tab go back to data analysis it should already be at regression so click on regression and push OK and this window should pop up again so this window should pop up again and now as I said before we want to run a regression in which both the predictor and the mediator predict the outcome so now we want to run a regression in which both the predictor and the mediator predict the outcome so to do that oops sorry sorry I think I actually went backwards okay yep so now we want to run we want to run a regression in which both the predictor and the mediator predict the outcome so to do that we want to tell Excel where, where our outcome data is so now we want to make the outcome job performance which is our actual outcome so now we want to tell Excel to use job performance as the outcome so we would highlight the job performance data after clicking that button and including the label so we would highlight the job performance data and then click the highlighted button and now we need to tell Excel where our predictor data is what we want to use as the predictor in this second regression so we would click the highlighted button and we would highlight both job satisfaction and motivation and that's extremely important in this second regression you want to highlight both job satisfaction and motivation so make sure you highlight both of them and then you click the highlighted button so after you highlight both of them the labels uh, button should already be checked the labels button should already be checked so you don't have to check it again so just go ahead and push OK so once again you should get your regression results uh, so just from a quick look at this uh, you can see that neither of those were pre significant in predicting uh, job performance so neither job satisfaction or motivation were significant in predicting job performance but for now we just want to go ahead and record those two numbers for motivation so we want to record motivations unstandardized betas effect or sorry the unstandardized beta that represents the effect of motivation on job performance and we want to record the standard error that represents motivation standard error on job performance in other words just highlight the two numbers that I have highlighted below or just record the two numbers that I have highlighted below okay so now we've written down four numbers we have these uh, the, the, sorry we have the unstandardized beta coefficient and standard error of the effect of job of yeah job satisfaction on motivation and we have the unstandardized beta and the standard error 
of motivation on job performance. So we have those four numbers, both unstandardized betas, both standard errors, and we have it for job satisfaction on motivation and motivation on job performance. So now this is the part that Excel cannot do. We want to go to the following link. Uh, one way you could get there is just Google search Sobel test because that's the test we're going to use to actually do the test remediation or to see whether our indirect effect is indeed statistically significant. So we're going to go to this link and once again we did the regressions. The regressions just tell us direct effects. So now we want to do a Sobel test to see whether our mediation effect is significant or in other words we want to see whether that indirect effect is significant. We want to see whether the indirect effect of job satisfaction on job performance through motivation is indeed statistically significant. And we have to do a Sobel test to do that. So if we go to that website it should look like this. It should look like this. This is a, a two uh, researchers who have made this statistical calculator. They provide it for free on the internet. It's very convenient. And we're going to want to scroll down to the calculator itself. And this is what the calculator looks like. So as you can see, the calculator on the input side has four different things you can type in. As you guess, those are the four things that we have written down. So first you want to type in for A and SA. So A is the unstandardized beta coefficient of your predictor predicting your mediator. So A is the unstandardized beta coefficient in this example of job satisfaction predicting motivation. So go ahead and enter it in right there. And then SA is going to be the standard error of your predictor predicting your mediator. So in this example, that would be the standard error of the effect of job satisfaction on motivation. I think I have this out of order actually. So let's look at this one next. So right here, it's B and SB. So here we have B and SB. So in this part right here, we want to enter the unstandardized beta for B, the unstandardized beta between motivation and job performance. And then for SB, we want to enter the standard error of motivation on job performance. So once again, A was the unstandardized beta of job satisfaction on motivation. B is the unstandardized beta of motivation on job performance. SA is the standard error of job satisfaction on motivation. And SB is the standard error of motivation on job performance. So then after you enter all four of those things, you want to hit the calculate button. You want to hit the calculate button. Okay. And here's a screen of all four of the things that you're supposed to enter and after I hit calculate. So take a look at that input see it makes sense and as you'll see those are the four numbers that we had previously written down. So the unstandardized beta of job satisfaction on motivation was 0.098. The unstandardized beta of motivation on job performance was 0.108. The standard error of job satisfaction on motivation was 0.043. And the standard error of motivation on job performance was 0.201. And then we hit calculate and there we go. It calculated everything. Okay. So there we go, and this is now we have our test statistic, we have our standard error. So if we were reporting these results to a company, or if we were reporting these results in research, we would report the test statistic, we would report the standard error, and we would report the p-value. So right from there you can see the p-value. So try to think for a second what would you say about these results based on that p-value. Hopefully you said that there would not be a significant, a sorry, there would not be a statistically significant effect or a statistically significant indirect effect, as I should say. So based on this p-value, you would say that there is not a statistically significant indirect effect. So you would say the indirect effect of job satisfaction on job performance through motivation is not statistically significant. So we did not have significant mediation. There was no mediation effect here. That there was no mediation of motivation between job satisfaction and job performance there was no significant indirect effect of job satisfaction on job performance through motivation. So we did not have significant mediation. We did not have a significant indirect effect. However you want to word it, the test of mediation didn't work out for us. So therefore, from our results, our predictor significantly predicted our mediator. Our mediator did not significantly predict our outcome, and there was no significant mediating or indirect effect. So the only thing we could say was that job satisfaction significantly influenced motivation, but motivation did not significantly influence job performance, and thereby there was no significant mediating effect, 
that there was not a significant indirect effect of job satisfaction on job performance through motivation. So that's everything we can infer from these analyses. I know that's pretty complicated, so if you're confused, you might want to rewatch the video, you might want to rewatch the analyses, but most importantly, if you're confused, please send me an email. Feel free to shoot me an email. I'm happy to chat about mediation as much as possible. I think it's a very interesting analysis. I use it all the time in my research and also my consulting work. So if you're confused, shoot me an email. Otherwise, this video was only 20 minutes. I wanted to make it as short as possible since it is near the end of the semester. And this is a complicated concept. So I want you to, if you need to, rewatch the video and have time to rewatch the video. So that's all for this lecture. Uh, like I said, send me an email if you have any questions, but otherwise, Go do the guide, make sure you understand the guide, make sure you follow the guide, but there is no homework for this week. So you don't have any homework, but still make sure you do the guide, still make sure you understand everything, because this will be on the test. This will for sure be on the test. So make sure you understand it, but otherwise, thanks for listening.